Hey all, welcome to Shantrick where science meets investments and I'm your host Raj. I've been watching Prime shares pop lately and was thinking whether it's worthwhile to invest or not. This video presents both the bull and bear case based on my investigation. Personally, I think I don't have the risk appetite for this share until I realize gains from the small stake I have in Precision and Orte Mule because I have a small allocation for genomics in my portfolio. That said, in this video, we are diving into a pivotal moment for Prime Medicine, a company at the forefront of prime editing technology. You'll learn about their historic recent human trial success with top institutions like Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and Art Venture Partners just pouring in money into the stock and what their restructuring tells us about future priorities. We'll also explore the real investment risks, high cash burn, near-term valuation, and clinical uncertainty. So if you're wondering whether Prime is a smart buy or just another speculative biotech play, this video is for you. It has the full breakdown. That said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Prime Medicine raised $144.2 million through an oversubscribed public offering. The backing here isn't just financial, it seems to be strategic. The Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, known for placing long-term bets on game-changing therapies, has participated in a big way. So did Art Venture Funds with a $9.99 million investment. These aren't retail traders chasing a pop. These are serious institutional players who believe Prime's platform has commercial legs. Now to the science. In May 2025, Prime Medicine delivered the first ever clinical success in a human using Prime Editing. That therapy, PM359, treated a patient with chronic granulomatous disease or CGT, and it worked. The results are robust, potentially curative, and came with a clean safety profile. And that's amazing. This makes Prime the first company to show Prime Editing working in a human, positioning it as a standout in the gene editing race. It's a huge validation of that DNA word processor approach, editing without causing double strand breaks. Despite this success, Prime is deprioritizing the CGT program. Instead, they are focusing on larger indications like Wilson's disease and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency or AAPD. The question then is why? Broader markets and better partnership potential, including ongoing work with Bristol Myers Squibb. This move aligns with that new cost efficiency strategy, a sharpened focus on programs with the greatest commercial upside. Now let's talk cash. As of March 31, 2025, Prime had 158.3 million in cash and this recent raise extends their runway into mid-2026. But they are burning fast. They are burning cash very fast. $51.9 million loss in Q1 alone. That's biotech R&D for you. We'll find that in most of the companies like this. And then that is dilution. The new capital raise increased the share count significantly. Tough in the short term for existing shareholders who find that stakes diluted. The stock surged on clinical news and offering, but Prime remains highly volatile, typical of early biotech uh, companies, early stage biotech companies. As of August 2025, the stock trades around $4 to 4.35, while analysts break the 12 month target at around $9.25 to around $9.38. Some long-range bulls who are looking at timeframes like 2030 to 2040 are seeing massive upsides, assuming clinical successes. But the big word here is assuming. And I'm a project manager. In project management, we have a saying, whenever you make assumptions, add that into the risk log because every assumption is a risk because assumption can either come out to be true or false. When they turn out to be false, they are negative, And that's why they become a risk. Now let's come to the bull versus bear case. Here's why bulls would be excited. Historic first in human data for prime editing. Strategic prioritization of larger disease target is also a bull case because the earlier target of CGD was a very narrow segment. So now we are looking at Wilson's disease. These are all larger targets. Strong institutional backing from ARC and Cystic Fibrosis Foundation with money along with the collaboration with BMS is again a bull case. 
Now let us look at the bad case. Why is caution warranted? Well, no near-term revenue. All value is future dated. Key programs are still in early stage. High cash burn and recent layoffs. All of these, along with the dilution from capital raise and potential future dilution, they form the bad case for the stock. The question then is whether prime medicine is a buy. Well, Prime Medicine is emerging as one of the most technically ambitious players in gene editing. If that platform works across broader diseases, this could be a multi bagger because you'll have platform revenue by licensing the prime editing platform, and also you'll have disease revenue by using the platform to solve disease problems. But let's be clear, this is still a high-risk, high-reward biotech. It suits investors who are comfortable with volatility and long timelines. Or if you want to allocate a very small portion of your portfolio uh, to this uh, venture, then that's one area where it can be done. But if you're risk averse or income focused like I am, it may be best to wait until Prime clears more clinical milestones or secures a major licensing deal. In my case, I'm a retiree. The risk tolerance is low, but I'm still super bullish about genomics. So I have a small portion of my portfolio which I have reserved for genomics. Right now, it is occupied by my stake in autoimmune and precision. Precision is going to have uh, FDA approval coming up in the third week of this month. At that stage, I would either take a profit or a loss and exit from that stake. And that will open up my opportunity to look at stocks like Prime. Now, here's my question to you. What do you think of Prime Medicine? Will, it, will you buy it at current levels? And um, yeah, I'm waiting for your feedback. Put that in the uh, comment section. I always look at it. Also, let me know whether you agree with my thesis. Thanks for watching this video so far. And friends, if you have not yet subscribed, can you please subscribe and help grow our community of retail investors? Well, this brings me to an end of this video. I'll catch up with you again in the next one. Bye for now.